11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed. In other words, God was not just thinking about the day of creation. He was thinking about 2023, 2024, if the Lord should tarry, 2021. God was thinking about so much more than just the current situation. The moment you hear the word seed, the conversation is about the future. The moment you hear the word seed, the conversation is about tomorrow. Fruits are for today. That's why seeds generally last longer than fruits. If you don't preserve fruits properly, they damage most often. Seeds last longer than fruits because seeds are meant for the future. When God put seed in anything that he had created, he was thinking beyond that day. He was thinking beyond Adam. He was thinking beyond Eve and Seth and Cain. Abel, God was thinking future. The Bible says, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. If I were you, I know it sounds simple, but if I were you, I'll underline the word to its kind. Whose seed is in itself? On the earth. Where is the seed for a mango? It's within itself. This is key regarding where we're going tonight and next week. Where do you find the seed for an orange fruit? It's within itself. In other words, you cannot be a collector of orange seed and yet be a planter of apple tree. The seed is in that particular fruit. Anything you care less about will not be fruitful in your life. And anything you should care about must be significant in your life. You, you, harvest is something that does not happen by accident. Harvest do not take place by accident. It's, it's on purpose. Harvest is intentional. God put the seed for apple in the apple fruits. Where did God put the seed for human reproduction? In human. So if humans want to multiply, we cannot multiply and focus on the seed of a cat. If you want to multiply, are you listening to me? There's a lot of revelation in this, practical revelation that will advance your life. So, the seed for money is in money. The seed for ministry is in ministry. The seed, you look at the Beatitudes, we're going to touch on that. The seed for anything that you're looking for is in the fruit that you have. You cannot talk, live, cultivate, 
disturbances and troubles and have peace in your life. It's impossible. This is why Ishmael had to be kicked out. Ishmael had to be kicked out. The inception of that idea came from the observant Sarah. She observed and saw that Ishmael had the seed of disturbance. He had not at that moment portrayed any evidence of violence. He had not portrayed any evidence of war. But there was signs and seeds. And Sarah said, we are not going to wait for this to germinate and grow. This future got to go. Abraham was disturbed by that. He took it to God. And God said, Abraham, Sarah's right. Your wife is right. That seed has to go. The apostle Paul comes on the scene in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, and the apostle Paul explains to the church in Rome and to some aspect, the church in Galatia. And he said to them, Ishmael was a symbol of Mount Sinai. You know what happened under Mount Sinai? Disobedience, death, fear, longevity of a journey. But Isaac was Mount Zion. The apostle Paul made it clear that Ishmael represented carnality. There was a seed of carnality that was germinating in Abraham's household. So it had to be cast out. You cannot be a person whose mind is planted, fixated on confusion, and that's all you sow wherever you go. You know, there are certain individuals, somebody turn to your neighbor and say, that's not me. And some of them didn't look like they believe you. Hallelujah. You know, there are certain individuals, they joined something, and because they just joined, they had no idea how peaceful that thing was because they weren't there. And then they joined, and by nature, they just, or by habit, they start cultivating confusion, and they think that's the way that thing had been the whole time. They didn't know it was peaceful before they got there. Can I get a hallelujah? That's why I told you to tell your neighbor that's not you. And then, they're, if the environment, the body is healthy, they're spat out, and then they go somewhere else, and they didn't know how peaceful it was till they got there. And they think everywhere they go, they think everywhere they go, they are, <laughs> they're being followed with confusion, and people are so chaotic around. I paused a little bit because the Lord just reminded me of something that happened two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, my wife and I and the kids, we were driving around, and three times, three times, I almost got into an accident, three times. And I was convinced for the life of me that it was their fault. And I really believe it was. I really believe it was. The first time, Pastor Rita and my kids were upset. How, how are they going to drive like that? Nobody's looking. Nobody's looking around. Everybody's driving so bad. The weather's getting nice. So everybody's starting to drive crazy. So we all gathered together and joined our efforts and energy together. And we blasted that driver. We gave it to him good. How dare you be driving like that? People driving crazy. And then, after another distance, another vehicle, almost going to hit, and we ganged up together again. Like, today's crazy. Everybody's driving crazy. I mean, look at how crazy everybody's driving. And we gave it to that driver again. And then, after a certain distance, a third time, and one of, one of the smartest kids in my family, one of my kids said, 
Dad, if it's three times in a row, probably maybe it's you. <laughs> it's three times in the same day, maybe it's you. And when, I, when they said that, it never happened again. But I'm still convinced it wasn't me. <laughs> it reminds me of a thing I've said to the church in the past. That you, you, it's like somebody getting in an accident and coming out of the car. Some of you remember I've said this in the past and coming out of the car and saying, why is everybody driving so bad today? You're the fifth person I've hit today. You cannot sow confusion and darkness and seek to reap in peace and tranquility and light. The Bible says the seed it's in the particular fruit. You cannot sow something and expect a fruit of something else. And verse 12, the Bible says, And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and a tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And because of the focus of seed, in accumulation with all of the majesticness of creation, God said that it was good. Psalm 126 verse 5, the Bible says, Those who sow in tears shall reap joyful shouting. Those who sow in tears shall reap joyful shouting. You, when you sow in tears, you reap in joy. Sowing reflects work. It reflects, it reflects action. It reflects sacrifice. Not everything about a fruit is meant to be eaten. I need you to get that concept. Not everything about a fruit is meant to be eaten. You can talk about the different parts of fruit and question, where is this part? Where is the skin? Where is the seed? Where is this? Where is the actual fruit? Where is the juice? But not everything about a fruit is meant to be eaten. It is simply not fair to your future to eat every single thing about a fruit. It is not fair to your future to eat everything about a fruit. There are certain parts of fruits that are not meant to be eaten. Sometimes some skins need to be peeled off. You can't eat the skin sometimes when it comes to certain things with seeds. Sometimes the skins need to be peeled off, but the seed must absolutely be preserved if that seed is to have a future. When you catch me, or if you catch me eating an apple, and you see me take out the seeds and throw it in the garbage, you know what that means? I'm not expecting an apple tree from that experience. I'm not expecting it. So it's understandable if you see me throw the seeds in the garbage. Right away you know that this gentleman is not expecting a tree from that experience. But if you go to anybody, any, any individual that is expecting a tree from a seed they have, it is not prudent of them to throw away the seed if, it, if it's become obvious that they're expecting a germination of a tree. You're going to have to be able to analyze your life and say, these are seeds in my life. And very soon we're going to talk about the different kinds of seeds that you have in your life. If you don't have a seed in your life right now, you're in trouble. You're, if you're not sowing in your life right now, you have no future. You know what happens to those who don't sow? In harvest time, 
they go begging in harvest time. The Bible says in sowing time, there could be tears in the time of planting because there's sacrifice. You're giving something away. Some seeds can be eaten. Some seeds are edible. But just because they're edible doesn't mean you need to eat it all the time if you're expecting the future. The Bible says there are certain individuals who sow in tears. You don't see anywhere in Scripture where anybody talks about, there's many Scriptures that defines and reflects on sowing. And you will never see anywhere in Scripture where anybody has been identified as sowing in joy. Because there's sacrifice involved. Whether sowing in the area of education, sowing in the area, sowing in the area of ministry. A lot of you have certain particular relationships because the person you attached to probably sold in you, and that's why you're still around. And sometimes it's even in our family. Sometimes our children will hang around us because we sold in their lives. Sometimes our grandchildren are around in our lives because we sowed into their lives. There are certain mentees and spiritual sons and daughters that will hang around us because we sowed in our lives. And there are certain relationships that you have lost because you did not sow into that person or that thing. There are certain blessings that you have missed because you didn't sow. And there are certain blessings that you are enjoying whether you know it or not. There are certain blessings and relationships and benefits that you are enjoying because you sowed in that situation and you sowed in that environment. Are you listening to me? Every time the Bible talks about reaping and harvest, the Bible always equates it to joy. Joy, joy, joy. Weeping may endure for a night. Why? Because the nighttime is where there isn't any harvest. But joy comes in the morning when the sun rises and the flowers are blossoming. That's when joy comes. You are here today because you were once a seed. You are here today because you were once a seed. And I'm going to show you that. You're here today because you were once a seed. Your life today is a future of a past seed. Whether in the area of education, in ministry, your relationship with God. Listen, D, I'm, I'm talking to some born-again believers tonight, so I'm going to hit it hard here. The strength of your prayer life the power of your prayer life, the authority of your prayer life is simply summarized by the seed of the word of God that you've planted in yourself. You cannot praise amiss. You cannot worship amiss. You cannot pray amiss. You can't pray against the word of God, the will of God. That never changes. God says he honors his word even, even above his name. Great prayer warriors are prayer warriors that pray according to the ordinance and the statutes of God. It's not just about wishful thinking and saying things. You got to be in the word of God. And when you quote the word to God, that is prayer that is heard by God. That's why the children of Israel will always remind God of his word and promises. That's how you receive healing. You cannot receive anything that God has not released in his word for you. So the effectiveness of your prayer is based on the seed of the word that you've planted. Do you know the word of God is a seed? It is one of the first seed demonstrated. How did God credit the earth? How did this evidence of substance came about? How did this dimensional uh, word came about? Because God spoke a word. He spoke a word. The word was a seed. He spoke a word. The word was a seed. His word is a seed. Behold, a sower went to sow seeds. 
It says, the word of God, some fell here, some fell here. The word of God is a seed. So when you put the word of God in you, whether, are you listening to me? Whether it's in the area of worship, whether it's in the area of praise, whether it's in the area of prayer, whether it's in the area of your lifestyle, lifestyle, whether it's in the area of your finance, when you have the seed of the word of God in you, that's where the anointing flows. You don't move in the anointing based on what looks right. Not based on what seem right. Not based on what is popular. Not based on what is going viral. Not based on what seems like it's working. You're going to fail and it's going to fail and it's not going to work. Not with God. It may work for a season, but unless the seed of the word of God is in it, it's not going to be fruitful according to the purpose of God. And time will tell. Time will tell. If you've lived with a farmer before, sometimes there's certain things that grow in a farm that they're not sure what it is. They're not sure what it is. He says, well, let's wait and see. Time will expose it. If you don't have the substance in you, time will expose it. Oh, time will expose it. Oh, you better believe it. Time will expose it. Eventually, time will expose it. You may shine in one day and two months and three months, six, but time will expose it. So the Bible says God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Remember, 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 Elder Yah and I have spoken about this a couple of times in our conversations when the, the early church witnesses and audiences didn't know what to do with the disciples. And at one point, they were going to make a huge mistake in killing all of them. And Gamaliel showed up. And he says, okay, everybody, listen here. Before you kill these people, you got to make sure that you're doing the will of God because you're killing them and saying you want to please God. He says, remember some time ago, these groups of people rose up and they said they were of God and eventually time exposed them. How about you leave these ones alone? If they're indeed of, of God, time will expose them. The word of God is a seed. Now, we're going to touch on that too. But you cannot expect harvest from places that you have not sown seeds. You may be able to drain it for a little bit. You may be able to stretch it for a little bit. But the moment you hear the word seed, it means there will be a future. Your career today is a future of a past seed that you sown called your experience and your education. In other words... You must have a seed today in order to have a desired future. What is it in your life that is the most critical to you right now that you wouldn't want to lose? Your relationship with God, your marriage, your relationship with your family, your ministry, your finances. Well, let me tell you this. You have a seed of that future in your hand right now. And are you sowing those seeds? You got to walk in the revelation of sowing. You gotta, there are certain things that you got to understand. There are certain things that you, you, you must do where you know you're not getting any returns right now. And those around you may never understand why. But if you walk in the revelation of sowing and understand the power of sowing, those around may not understand what you're doing. I have a couple of neighbors in my neighborhood, and they are plants, flower people. I call them PFP, plant, flower people in our neighborhoods. And, and when the fall hits, and it's starting to be a little chilly outside. And if you know me, me on that. Sowing time is not the best time. It's not the best season for those who put in work. But harvest time comes and they are, they are fulfilled. They are blessed. If there's anything that interests you that you feel is significant, your relationship with God, well, you must sow seeds in it. You must sow seed. 
If there's anything in your life that's significant, in a, a relationships, your, your, your vertical relationships, you must sow seeds in it. You, you must have time for it. Nothing flourishes by itself. One great thing about a seed is it grants you the choice to decide what kind of fruit you want to have in the future. Seeds gives you and grants you the opportunity to decide what kind of fruit you want to have in the future. There are certain fruits that in Canada, we go to South Africa to get those kind of fruits because we don't have the conditions to sow those seeds. There are certain fruits that we go to Mexico to get because we don't have the conditions to sow those kind of seeds. There are certain things that we enjoy that we have to wait for it to come from Florida because we don't have the conditions. Watch this. Anything that you need in the future that you don't sow seed for, you must go somewhere else to ask for it. Anything that you need in the future that you don't sow into it, you must go somewhere else to ask for it. One great thing about seeds is it gives you the choice to decide what kind, what kind of fruit you want to have. That's why we can say that a certain individuals are gifted or good or flourish or excel in this particular area of life. I can promise you that for the most part, it didn't come by osmosis. There are seeds that are sown. Do you know that most children can do the splits? Do you know that most children can do the splits? If they try doing the splits from a one year, two year, three years, it's so much easier because they have so much particles of bones than we do. The older you get, the lesser particles of bones you have because two bones become one. Glory be to God. So if you want to maintain any type of agility in your body, you must continue to sow seeds in that area. And there are certain things that when I was younger I could do. There are certain things that I could do when I was younger. I can, I can bend my legs in a certain way. Um, there are certain tricks I could do with my legs and all of that. And, and I forgot about it for many years until I had kids who could do what I could do before and I tried to impress them one day. And I forgot that I had not done it for 20 years. And you know what my body tells me? You have not sown anything in this area for a long time, brother. You're going to suffer. If there's anything you want to return to in the future, you got to sow in it. You got to sow into it. You, you got to spend time with it. One important thing about a seed, it grants you the choice to decide what kind of fruit you want to have in the future and the quantity of the substance you want to have in the future. A seed reproduces after its own kind. You cannot invest all your time in one particular thing and expect outcome in something else. You, you, cannot, ex, you cannot spend all of your time in learning how to play soccer and expect to be an amazing basketball player. It just doesn't work like that. You are going to reap what you sow. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow is what you are going to reap. Genesis, quickly, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. The Bible says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for humans' sake. Although the imagination of humans' heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy everything as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest 
cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. When the Lord talked about cold and heat, he was still talking about sowing. It has everything to do with sowing. He wasn't talking about the temperature. He was talking about sowing. Because the temperature of cold and heat has everything to do with sowing and reaping. That's why in Canada, particular areas in Canada, we cannot sow certain things. Because sowing has everything to do with condition and season. There is a time where God will call you to sow. You may not understand. You may not understand. I was thinking about a man that I was having a conversation with four weeks ago. And he was telling me about, he's in ministry, and he was telling me about coming from a very far place, driving three hours and taking his son to a basketball game. And I thought to myself, I said, wow, in 15 years, this man won't be doing this anymore, in 15 years, because the child will grow up and be on his own. But that moment was a sowing time in that child's life. That moment was a sowing time in that child's life. Cold and heat has everything to do with sowing. There, there's a particular moment where you got to call it a season of sowing. It won't feel good. Some of you are living through it right now. It won't feel good. It won't look good. Jesus on the cross, watch this. Jesus on the cross was a season of sowing. It says unless that seed, his body, goes in the ground. And it wasn't pretty. Sowing seasons, that's why the Bible says those who sow in sorrow. Sowing seasons are not good. It speaks of sacrifice. When you do apprenticeship, that's a sowing season. When you do co-op, that's a sowing season. When, when you have to start working and getting paid from little, that's a sowing season, sowing time. When you have to put in more than what you're getting in that season, it could be a time of sowing. Sowing times don't look, don't feel good. But... It's necessary for harvest. It's necessary for increase. It's necessary for reaping. He, the Bible says, while the earth remains, seed time. Now, watch this. This is a moment where we are living Genesis chapter 1 all over again. Everything had been destroyed. There had been a tremendous replenishing. Now, anybody want to talk about a great reset? This is a great reset. And there's another one coming. It's not what the internet is telling you. It's not. Let the economy do what it does. The world's seen recession and, 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 and the world's seen it all. Don't get perplexed by that. The greatest reset that the world should be concerned about is called the rapture. That is the greatest reset. You watch when all the anointed born again pilots are gone. When all the anointed born again mechanics are gone. And you're left with just the lying lawyers. And the lying doctors. And the false preachers and teachers. That's what you're going to understand what great reset. Let the world be focused and be consumed and be perplexed by this reset of economy that's coming. Watch, be aware, but don't be moved by that. Jesus said, I tell you these things so that when they come, you will know I've already told you. You know why certain people are so amazed at certain things and they're so caught up in that and, and they're not even being motivated to do what they ought to do and occupy to the Lord comes because they, don't, they didn't know it's in the Bible. Jesus said, I tell you these things so that when they happen, you're not surprised. Remember when Elijah was believing for a rain to come. He the one that had prayed for it. 
So when the rain was coming and he sent his servant to go look and he says, I saw a cloud like a, a fist of human and the servant was all amazed coming down town and Elijah, Elijah's like, I expected that. Are you listening to me? There are, the world events are indeed amazing as the scriptures spoken of prophetically and happening, but we're not shocked by it. That's why that was one of the main points of Jesus. So that when they happen, you will know that I already told you. You, you got to have and walk in a revelation of understanding seed time and harvest time. You got to be able to point. Now, sometimes you may have invested in a particular area for a season, and then you reap the reward for that season. That doesn't mean you've done sowing. You got to walk in a revelation of sowing Amen. all the time. I'm going to... John chapter 15, verse 16. Write that scripture down. John chapter 15, verse 16. Jesus said, Jesus said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. He says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. I want you to listen to that carefully. I want you to listen to that carefully. He said, I chose you. You did not choose me. So watch this. Jesus is saying, I chose my seed. When he came on the earth as human, he chose his seed. Now I'm going to show you that he's talking about seeds. When he mentioned us, he was talking about seeds. He said, I chose you. I could have chosen other creations. That would have been my seed. Let, let me, can I tell you something that will shock you? Can I tell you something that will shock you? The world is not going to end by human power. Oh, man. The world is not going to earn, end by human power. The world is going to end by the will of God. Yes. Anytime you've seen an end to a world in our Bible, it was by God's doing. There is going to be a rapture. Amen. Whether, whether China and America go to war or not, whether Russia and America go to war, the world is not going to end by human power. Mark that everywhere, anywhere. It's not. Humans don't have that power. We, I mean, when Hiroshima took place, a certain place, we have, that, we have that authority for domain and all that, but nobody has power for what happens to all of humanity but God. Don't be afraid by what the media is feeding you with. The rapture is going to take place. There could be world, world War I happened and they thought the whole world was going to be over. World War II happened and they thought the world was going to be over. World War III is going to happen and they're going to think, nobody has the power to end human life but God. Yeah. They don't have the power. Unless the Bible you read is not true and unless you don't believe in the Bible. But you know what we can do? We can end, we humans can end the life of other creation. We can. we can. We can choose to end all of mangoes and all of orange. We can choose to end, to end humans. We can choose to end any particular kind of species. But we can never end all of humanity. You know why? Because the seeds of everything else has been given under us and under authority. So when we sow, we reap. When we sow, we reap. The seed of human has been given to us, but we're not in charge of the absoluteness of human existence. John chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus said, I could have chosen that creation, I could have chosen that species, but he said, I chose you. I chose you. God subjected himself to the lineage of humans. 
because he's in charge of what happens to all of humanity. God will never subject himself to the absolute power of any human. That's why he said, I lay my own life down. Right. He said, he said, he said, I chose you. What's that mean? You get to choose the seed that you want to sow. He says, I chose you. I could have chosen cows. I could have chosen elephants. I could have chose, chosen tomatoes. But he said, I chose you. Watch this. And he said in John chapter 15, the 16th verse, he said, because I chose you, I expect you to bear fruits. Uh, you thought he was talking about just you. He was talking about you as a seed. I chose you. How? He chose you as a seed. He says, I chose you. That you may bear fruits. And the fruit that you bear shall remain. So every time God looks through the windows of heaven and looks at you and opens the blinds of heaven and looks at you, he's looking at you as an incredible seed that he planted. And every single outcome that you exhibit, you are showing the fruits of what Jesus planted. Lift up your hands to the heavens and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah. You are the seed of God. Come on, talk to him. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. You are the seed of God. You are the seed of God. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice and talk to him. Tell him, Lord, I thank you. Talk to him, say, Lord, I thank you that I'm your seed. Tell him, Lord, you could have chosen anybody. You could have chosen anything, but you chose me. Father, you chose me. Talk to him, Father, you chose me. I thank you for choosing me. Tell him, Lord, I thank you for choosing me. Admit it, admit it, admit it. Lord, I'm your seed. Talk to him, Lord. I admit it, I'm your seed. Thank you for planting me. Thank you for establishing me. Thank you for, talk to him. Lord, thank you for establishing me. I'm your seed, I'm your seed, I'm your seed, I'm your seed. Thank you for planting me. Yes, Lord, thank you for planting me. Hallelujah. Thank you for planting me. Thank you for planting me. Hallelujah. Thank you for planting me. Hallelujah. Thank you for planting me. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, talk to him, church. Talk to him. Talk to him. Lift up your voice and talk to him. Lift up your voice and talk to him. Lord, thank you for planting me. Lord, thank you for Lord, make me a mighty fruitful tree. The Bible says the righteous is like a palm tree. The righteous is like a palm tree. Talk to him, Lord, I thank you. Make me fruitful. Hallelujah. Make me fruitful. Make me fruitful. Hallelujah. I want to be fruitful in every single area of my life. I want to be fruitful. In my relationship with you, I want to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but delight in the word of the Lord day and night. He shall be like a tree. Everybody say tree. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he does, he shall prosper. Come on, somebody say, prosper me, Lord. Prosper me, Lord. Come on, talk to him. Say, prosper me, Lord. Prosper me, Lord. Prosper me, Lord. Come on, tell him, Lord, prosper me. Nourish me, Lord. Nourish me. Nourish me. Cause me to flourish. Lord, prosper me in my relationship with you. Prosper me. Hallelujah.
Lord seed you. Amen. There's something in planting and sowing called seeding. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord seed you. May the Lord water you. I Amen. feel an anointing here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We always have an anointing, but deeper than usual. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord seed you. Yes. Glory. May the Lord water you. Amen. May you be as though being nourished by the dews of heaven. May the dew of the Lord be upon you. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Harvest be plentiful. Amen. May you reap with joy. Amen. Oh, may the Lord cause you to flourish. Amen. Your leaves will never wither. Amen. I declare an evergreen anointing Amen. over your life. In all season you shall stand. Amen. And you shall withstand every and any storm in Jesus' name. May your roots run deep. Thank you are the planted of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord who gives seeds to the sower Amen. bless you with seed. Amen. Church, I declare the blessings of the Lord over you. Amen. Now and forever. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you, church. I'll see you on Sunday. Jesus. God bless you. you are the